Welcome, everyone. Welcome, welcome to SME Podcast, where we have the opportunity to talk to individuals in the real estate space uh, that are shaking, moving, making things happen, whether it's within their community, nationwide. Um, you know, they have a voice here on this podcast. And today we have the opportunity, the pleasure of talking to someone that is, uh, is top 1.5% of, you know, of the nation out of hundreds of millions of uh, realtors. And, um, you know, this guy is a wealth of knowledge. We actually met uh, a couple of years back in this other company that we were a part of, a marketing company. And you know, he was doing good things this, there as well. And so um, it's evident, you know, you're, you're in one space, you're doing well, then you're going to pass that on to every other um, profession or career that you go to. So without further ado, guys, I want to I want to hand the mic over to Andrew Voss. Did, did I pronounce it right? Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. Awesome. And um, you know, I, I want I, you know I want the people to know who you are, where you come from, um, you know, a little bit about your story, and then we can get into the realtor side and you know where what you're doing now, the big accomplishments. You know, this guy's been featured on Fox. Yahoo and some other great uh, uh, locations. So you can mention all those as well. But hey, man, the floor is yours. You can let us know exactly where you're from and uh, you know how you got started in real estate. Cool. Well, Jay, I feel like we have a similar story, right? We were just talking about that before we got on here. Yeah. How our journeys are almost you know identical in mm -hmm. in a lot of aspects, uh, which is crazy because I mean I feel like that's more common than not, right? Everybody goes through like basically the circle of life, right? Right, Ups, right. Downs, and it's just all out. It's just how you react to those situations that you either going to have a great outcome or you're going to have a worse outcome, right? Right, and right. I, and like we got a better outcome, right? If similar stories come out on the other end and um, having fun with it. But For yeah, sure. so I grew up in upstate. Like New a shirt, York. by the way, man. Oh, Red X. <laughs> so I'm always, I'm an ambassador for Red X. So if you want $150 off setup fee, let me know. I, nice. so wait, before, before you get into who you are, where you're from and all that, tell us about Red X. Yeah. For people so, that don't know. Yeah. So Red X is a dialer, a platform that pulls in for sale by owners, expireds, <clears> uh, <throat> geo leads, geo leads. Basically you can pull neighborhoods and pull lists of people and contact those people. And you should be able to do that in a way that it's not necessarily a full cold call. It would be like, Hey, we're doing an open house in your neighborhood. Just want to let you know, come check out your neighbor's house. Right. Nice. Nice. Or, Hey, we just sold a property. at one, two, three banana street. Come, uh, go meet your neighbor. She loves brownies. I don't know. Something like yeah, that. Yeah. Anything. Yeah. Yeah. Just build a rapport. Right. So it's not like, Hey Jay, I heard you want to sell a house. Yeah. I'm here to help you. <laughs> you know, oh, it's yeah. so not, you know, like, those, like another one. Yeah. Yeah. Those very like corny and um, kind of disrespectful scripts. I think those are out the window and people are more going to like, how can I help you? Hey, right, I'm a right. resource type deal. Um, so anyways, yep. Yeah, so I'm an ambassador for Red X. Nice. They give us free uh, cool tools, gear, all that stuff. And um I'm able to help people out by getting waiving their setup fee. So nice. and they get they I will say, man, they got a they got a uh, a great ambassador in you, man, for sure. That's awesome that uh you know yeah. you they so, they're that's why I said let me go throw on my shirt because there you go. I didn't know if we we're gonna do video podcast, but <laughs> always gotta represent the people that I mean, because they help us build our business for sure directly and indirectly. So yeah, any love I can show them, I'm like, hey, let's do it. So why not? Yeah, I grew up in upstate New York, um, only child. So I have the syndrome sometime, you know, sometimes the only child syndrome, you know, like the me, 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 but yeah, the older yeah. I get, the less I have it or the more personal <laughs> development I get, the less I show it. Right. But went to college for a short period of time, um, blew my parents money on uh -huh. drugs, alcohol, fun, gas, food basically everything you could think of. It just yeah, all the fun stuff. Yeah. It was just a waste. Of, it was, it was honestly, it was fun, but it was a giant waste <clears> of time. <throat> I hear you. Those yeah. three months I could have either been working on my degree or had already joined the army and been steps ahead of right. Or done something else, but something else, yeah, yeah. So then I 
woke up one day, looked in the mirror. I was out of shape. I wasn't doing anything with my life. I hadn't gone to class other to find out where the parties were. Like, I just wasn't, yeah. So Dang. I joined the army. Um, it took me 30 days because I had to get a negative drug test, you know, for weed. Yeah. So yeah. it took yeah. me 30 days and 30 days I was off. And But prior was, to that, was the, was the army an option? Was it ever an option? And I asked that because it was never an option for me when I joined the Air Force. Yeah. No, it wasn't an yeah. option. And I tell people this. I'm very patriotic now and I freaking love our country. Mm-hmm. But then I... I had no clue. I didn't care. Yeah, you could care less. Yeah. Nobody ca- yeah, nobody talked to me about I didn't grow up in a very patriotic family. Right. Yeah, I mean be- my dad was a cop, my mom was a social service worker. So we are very like like we we appreciate service people, mm-hmm. right? But it mm-hmm. wasn't like flags hanging up, you know, like rah rah America. Yeah. You know, but yeah, but joining the army definitely gave me a sense of like ownership gave me a sense of, you know, um, standing with like your brothers and sisters <clears throat> from all walks of life and kind of helped me do a 180 and yeah. gave, just teach, taught me that discipline and stuff. So, yeah. That's awesome, man. So you served how long in the, in the army? Just under 10 years. I always tell, okay. I always, when I tell people, I'm like nine and a half year, nine years and five months. And people are like, that's very specific. I'm like, yeah, it you was count. a long time. You and, and the thing is that we know on our DD two fourteen, so it's yep. like we're always looking at that number. Yeah, yep. man. Yep. Yep. So, so transitioning from from being a civilian into the army, like how was that? You know, like you said, it was never an option, but was it difficult uh, for you transitioning? Because you know, there's some people that they they think about, you know, as young as a young kid, they think about going to the the military, and their transition is easy because that they they've always wanted that. I know it wasn't that easy for me because I'm like what what am I doing like I'm, is this really the the you know the the direction that I'm, I'm going in my life yeah um so it wasn't easy for me how, how was it for you transition it, it was easy <clears throat> because like once I made that decision I was all like I had already spent the th- last 30 days getting sober I you know like I was I was already like all in I all was in, like man gotcha. this this thing can't come soon enough I'm like ready to go right yeah so I think, right, any decision you make, you just need to make it and make like it. the all in decision. Um, but like when I when I got in, I was like, OK, cool. So what what do I have to do? Like what is going to make me stand out and be better than the people next to me? Right. Mm-hmm. Not that it, everything's a competition, but, you know, the competition started first in me. Right. In me against right. me. Yep. But then also, I don't care where you go, any workforce, a new job is a new job. How you you can either fall in with the rest of the people that are sitting at lunch bitching about it and right, yeah. saying they don't like their boss and doing all this crap, or you can go in there and be by yourself, but be better than everybody else. Everyone else. And, yeah. Right. Because as soon as you go in and you're like everybody else, guess what everybody does? They just label you like everybody else. Like you're everybody else. Yeah. You don't stand out. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, what do I got to do? Okay. So the main thing they focused on was PT, like physical fitness Mm -hmm. and uh, just like being able to lead your peers. And I'm like, okay, that's easy. So got in the A group for like PT, just like trying to, I wasn't, I was pretty fast, but I wasn't the fastest. I wasn't the strongest but I never stopped. Right. 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 And that's the biggest thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I always had one of the highest PT scores, but never the best, but it was like, I was, I was like, I was like, all right, how can I be above average in everything? Okay. Above average in PT, but above average in leadership, above average in job. Once we got to that point. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. I just went there and, you know, I spoke up to my peers when I felt like I needed to speak up and, when I didn't, I didn't open my mouth. Right. I didn't yeah. just speak up to speak up, to be like a brown noser. I just like when I just didn't want to get smoked anymore. So I just tell people to shut up, like Yo, shut up, do what we got to do and let's go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so it was pretty easy <clears throat> for me because the competitiveness came out of me and gotcha. then, okay. um, yeah. And then it just kind of, that just kind of progressed throughout my career when, once I went to job training and then once I went to my first unit, 
Uh, I got deployed within like 30 days to mm -hmm. Iraq and then came back and I was like, okay, well, there's got to be something better. There's got to be something like more elite than where I'm at because right. it wasn't yeah. very elite. So I, I'm like, okay, let me go try it out for Ranger Battalion. So I went to Ranger Battalion, made that. I was there for a few years. I'm like, okay, well, I'm kind of over this, right? And at that point, I got I got back in like party mode. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, because it's all dudes. They're all yoked up on like yeah. testosterone. <laughs> you give yeah. like, you just have all these like young men that are all like their testosterone still at like 1200 crazy yeah yeah and they're they're probably taking stuff to even boost it boost that yeah they're trying for no to reason you don't even have to they just do yeah it. but yeah. Th in their mind they're like we got to be the best because we're one of the most elite <clears throat> units on the planet right, right. got to be the best how do we be the best we push our bodies as far as we can push it right right so okay so we have that and then you take them like downrange or to afghanistan or wherever they go and you send them after some of the bad, the worst mother effers on the planet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then you expect them to come home and not drink. And suppress that and suppress yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so like we would come home, we'd all go downtown, we'd all drink, we'd all like blackout or we'd all like just do crazy stuff. Yeah. And I was like, okay, well, I'm kind of over this. So I'm like, all right, I need to go to a new unit. And I just kind of relaxed for a little bit. Mm -hmm. So then I went to um, a special forces unit as a support guy. So I was there as a support guy, but we were doing the same shit. Same Cause stuff, I got attached yeah. to the teams. Yeah. So we were deploying, we were on off cycle. We were trained. Like it was no different. Yeah. It was like absolutely the same. And then I met my daughter's mom. We kind of, we did our thing for a little bit, had our daughter and yeah. then, yeah. Um, we, we went separate ways when I was getting out of the military. I, I was relying, I, I had started doing some real estate investing and in some other like businesses. You and I were in a, uh, networking business together, mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. which was really fun. It was fun, yeah. dude. It was a good um, time. yeah, it was learned a ton, but a lot of great people we met and all that, mm -hmm. but, um, <laughs> they stopped paying us. Right. And yeah. When they stopped paying that, us. That, that's, that's a part and I don't want to cut you off, but that's a part of like the history of that, that I, not that I tried to not disclose. It's just, look, things weren't going well financially. So yeah. I had to, you know, I had to walk away from that. So, yeah. And, and that's fine. Like, <clears throat> however we want to like package Label that it. up in a little box and give it to people. I yeah. mean, I'm not, I'm not talking negative on it. Yeah, no, no. It just is what it was. It and is I what was, it is. Yeah. I was semi-reliant on that income getting out of the military. So 100%. 100%. That was a, that was a, uh, yeah, kick in the stomach for me. So, so then, but I also had some real estate investments that were upside down with, like we talked about earlier, I had some mm -hmm. really bad partners. Yeah. I was one of the bad partners. I had no uh, idea what I was doing. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. the other two people didn't know what they were doing either. So we, so it's easy for me to say, oh, it's them and not it me. But that's yeah, not the case. Sure. We're all three sucked. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> so you so just, you, you guys had the intent. The intent was there, right? The drive, but it was just like, all right, who's, who's guiding this? Who's leading this thing? Yeah. We, none of us know. I got you. Yeah. The blind leading the blind. Leading basically. the blind. Correct. So, yeah. So I ended up like, uh, so I borrowed a bunch of money from friends and family for those investments. Mm -hmm. And I ended up 150,000 to $200,000 in debt. Um, yeah. And then what I did instead of- How scary was that? Bro. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, so every day you're like, okay, do I file bankruptcy? What do I do? Like, and I'm like, nah, nah screw that. Yeah, I, it can't be bankruptcy. Yeah, I've been there. Yeah, and 100%. I know, bro. Yeah. yeah. So what I did was, and I'm not, and I'm not saying this is the best option to do. Uh, this is just the option I took. I got a company to help me settle, right? So that two hundred thousand dollars basically got twenty five percent knocked off. So nice. instead of paying twenty two hundred, I paid one fifty. One hundred fifty thousand dollars when you're drowning is a lot of money to like shrink down, right? So or okay. take so away. it was twenty five k that was taken off. That was twenty five percent. That you had to pay or they that was shaved that they, off? That they shaved, they were able to shave off. Okay, so 150 that you paid. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. So I ended up paying whatever I paid. So I cash advanced a lot of the credit cards. 
to pay mm-hmm. off friends and family before I did this. Yeah. And I was like, man, this is my only option. I got to get, I got to get everybody else whole and then I can just worry about me. But yep, me yep. about me. So did yeah, that. Yeah. And then we, um, yeah. And then I just worked my way up from there. I got a job out in Colorado, <clears throat> government job. They're paying me just under a hundred thousand dollars a year to, and come to find out, I only had to work really four days or four hours a week. So was, where, where, where were you at this time? Cause you had gotten out of the military. You were yeah, in, still in Florida. You were still in Florida. Okay. Yeah. So you're still in Florida, you got out and then that's when you were doing the marketing company and the investments. Yep. And it was yep. all in Florida, like everything that you did. All the, yeah. Everything was in Florida, but okay. you know, that, that networking business, it was all over, you know, got, so, right. You got, got us all over. Yeah. Yeah. But, Call yeah, some people most of from it was anywhere. in Florida. Yeah. I moved from Crestview, Florida to Pensacola, Florida to start nice. working at a book publishing company. Nice. Yeah, I was in Crestview, man. Oh, Crestview is Crestview. good. Good story. Yeah. Yeah. So then, um, yeah, I got offered a job by the government. So I took the government job out in Colorado, left my daughter with her mom and, you know, only saw her on summers and holidays and whenever I could. And at this time you were still trying to pay off that debt Yeah, all this time. Okay. I took that debt with, so that debt didn't get paid off fully until 2019. So two years after I got out. Two years. Gotcha. Yeah. Two, yeah. About two, two and a half years. Yeah. And, but I use that from, so I use the money I was making from the government. Plus I use my VA disability. Plus in 2018, um, I got a, right. Was it 2008? Yeah. Wow. It's almost been four years. I've been a realtor. Mm-hmm. So finally my buddy asked me, Jay, Jay Nelson. Yeah. He's like, Hey dude, why don't you get your real estate license? I'm like, all right, finally, he'd been asking me for years. And this I is in him. Colorado now. Yeah. In Colorado. Okay. But he, I met him at a, uh, a view event in Baltimore. Okay. So one of, one of the marketing companies, uh, yeah. events that they held. Yep. Okay. And so, yeah, so I got my real estate license and hit the ground running. And first year I did 22 sides and then the second year, 67 sides. So the first year I made 112,000 and I put about 60 or 70 back into my business while still paying off debt. Right. So I really didn't make a ton that year. Second year I made $400,000. Nice. Um, yeah. So I basically what four X my pay. And then the sec the third year made more than that for this fourth year, I'll make more than that. But so 2020 you quadrupled from the first year. Yeah. 2020. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then what I did from that is as I was paying, I paid off all that debt and then I just started taking my money and I'm like, okay, well, my money sitting in my bank account <clears throat> is dumb as we can all see, you're literally losing money. Yeah. And I was like, they're not there to help us out, man. Yeah. And I, what I did was the way, this is the way I look at it, investing. I'm sure you do the same way. I don't, or opportunities. I don't look for opportunities to save pennies, to make, try to make dollars. Yeah. I try to look for opportunities that I'm going to turn hundreds into thousands. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah. okay, if I give you a hundred dollars, and you give me an opportunity and I can make thousands. I'm not trying to save pennies to make dollars. Right. That's yeah. That, yeah. That's how you lose money in inflation. <laughs> and that's, that's you, all, and you'll stay there. You'll stay there. Yeah. And that's, that's a poor mindset. That's right. a, that's a very, so I was like, okay, let me just start taking my money. Let me just, okay. I need to get out of the apartment. I'm selling people house, people houses. I need to fix my credit. Because my credit took a hit when all this was happening, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm like, Damn, I got to fix my credit. So I started paying for all these credit repair companies. What I found out is the more credit repair companies you have, it's almost better because they're all sending letters in and things are getting wiped out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, all right. Yeah. And I don't know if that's the way, but I would just, it just worked that's out. That's what helped me. you. Yeah, that's what worked out for you. Yeah. And I'm sure you do credit. Re- do you do credit repair? I, ha- I have, I have. I, I don't yeah. do it as much now, but I have, yeah. Yeah. So maybe you can tell me if I'm right or wrong, but I had all these companies that sending in letters and I think it's just started confusing the computers where the letters were going into. And they're like, okay, boop, boop, boop. Things are like my, my thing went from basically a 500 to a 700 in like 
short period of time because yeah, things were just getting be quick. Yeah. yeah. Be quick. Yeah. No, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Like six to nine months. I was like, I'm like, okay. So I bought a house there. I'm like, man, I'm like rolling in dope. Hey, it's like, almost a game, man. It's almost a game in, in the credit space. Yeah. For sure. It's a, trying to get that helped out. Yeah, it was crazy. But anyways, <clears throat> so that's kind of my story with Colorado. I just started, you know, meeting people, passing out business cards, joining networking events, hitting people up on social media, posting on social media frequently, yeah. consistently, and all that. So so that's a that's a good segue. What I wanted to talk about was, or for you to to um, you know, express and explain what was your process in the beginning, right? Like uh, from, you know, joining uh, a brokerage, like did you join the team or was it, hey, I'm just going to fly solo on this thing and kind of, uh, you know, be a sponge to everything that I see and, and regurgitate that, you know, and be, be exactly what I see. And then I'm just going to, I'm going to put that out there into, into the, uh, the social media space. Yeah. So what I did was I joined solo. I didn't join a team. Uh, my company, uh, assigned me a local mentor for my first three transactions. Right. And, and I know my personality or the way I do stuff isn't going to fit everybody, but I'm like, I just need to take action. I don't care if it's wrong. I'm not an analytical person. There's nothing. I don't even think I have a analytical bone in my body <laughs> i'm just God. not analytical right yeah, like, yeah, yeah. My i mean you had to be a little bit man if you were a ranger you had to be some analytical well there's smart rangers and there's strong rangers ah gotcha okay. i was a strong ranger you so, still gotcha. yeah but i mean i i know i could hustle <clears throat> so i'm like okay what what makes a great salesperson people that are honest right yeah yeah, the ones that can bullshit and they'll get by for a little bit, but sure. they won't last long. But people that are honest, people that smile, good looking people. If you're if you're not good looking, I don't know, figure it out. Yeah, but figure it I'm out. Man. You, yeah. Good looking people tend to if you smile and you bring a good energy and flow and glow and you can just vibe with anybody. With anyone, yeah. Yeah, people are gonna just wanna work with you because mm-hmm. Law of attraction, right? Right. So I just start, went out, started meeting people. I joined some kickball leagues. And what I did was I was like, okay, I have some expendable income now. Let me start buying Zillow leads. So I bought Zillow leads. Where okay. I messed up on the Zillow leads is I didn't have a follow-up process. I would be like, hey, what's up, Jay? Um, great. You can't, you can't buy a house right now. Okay. Well, let me link you up with a lender, but uh, just hit me up whenever you get, you're able to. Yeah. yeah. You didn't keep track of them. There was no CRM. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I wasn't putting people in my CRM or they would go into my CRM, but I wouldn't follow up with them. You didn't and, do anything. Yeah. 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 So it was kind of a, sh- uh, a shit show, but I lost like 5 million in volume in volume that year. I probably would have hit <laughs> icon agent my first year at, at our brokerage, but that was my fault, but it was a lot of this learning. Is, right? And if this is, if you even want to disclose that, what was the first brokerage that you were part of? So I've never been with any other brokerage. I've only been. Oh, with- okay. This is okay. You're the same one. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but my first year here, right. And I this is like, what, what brokerage? Uh, EXP. EXP. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yep. yeah. So I, I don't know anything different. I just kind of learned about brokerages as going through the process. I didn't mm-hmm. interview with anybody because what I did is I joined with a person that I thought was going to get, well, he did. He helped me. I was like, okay. Funny story. We 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 have a mutual friend. Her name starts with a Melanie. <laughs> um, <Yeah. laughs> and she called me about real estate. She and, called you about real estate? Yeah, she was like, "Hey, I'm joining this company named EXP, and yeah. I love Melanie. Melanie's always been good people to me." Yeah, yeah. But yeah. when I when I looked at her her <clears throat> journey, she hasn't she hadn't done anything, and she was joining EXP gotcha. to recruit not to sell real estate, to sell real estate. And I'm like, okay, that sounds really good because I know that the model for recruiting is great. Yep. But eventually you're going to have to know how to sell a house because people are going to ask you. Yeah. What what the hell are you doing with that? You know, what are you doing here? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, all right. Thank you for showing this to me again. I had seen it a long time ago, but thanks for opening up my eyes again, but I'm not, I'm going to go in a different direction. And I went back to the person I knew that sold their Remax and joined EXP. And I'm like, okay, Jay, 
here. Now you have my yep. undivided attention. So I, jo I joined my brokerage based off where I thought that person can get me. Sure. I, didn't yeah. Join, yeah. I didn't join for the cap. I didn't join for the split. I didn't join. None of that mattered to me. It right. was the person I joined with because they had, he sold over 1,200 homes. He yeah, he had home. what you, he, you seen in him that, you know yeah. what, he can lead me somewhere because he's, he's doing something, right? He's doing yeah. what I need to do anyways in this industry, which is sell homes. He's yeah, exactly. It. So that's kind of how I, I chose my brokerage and people join for all various reasons. One thing I wouldn't join for is the training. Anybody that's telling you on training, I mean, the one-on-one -on -one mentor, like the, tr like every company has training and it bothers yeah, all of them so have. much. Yeah. Like there's brokerages out there. They're like, we have the best training on the planet. I'm like, so you're just going to keep agents in your office all day and just train them. Just like train they're not them, yeah. out selling houses. Right. Like, how about they like, need to be out more than they need to be getting this training. Yeah. 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 And maybe, maybe I'm not describing it properly, but I, that's one thing that bothers me. They're like, Oh, we have the best training. We have the best. I'm like, I don't know. I train myself. Yeah. <laughs> YouTube university, man. Yeah. Everybody. But, goes out, um, forgot where I was going with that, but well, so what I did, well, so she, okay. Yeah. No, no. Oh no. So I didn't, I joined with the, that person. Right. And then I just said, Jay, just teach me everything you, you got, right. You got, yeah. yeah and you know. that's kind of what, what got me here. He helped me. But then as you go through like your progressions on your success, right. There's like different levels, right. You gotta, you gotta meet new people and you gotta have new mentors. So I'm like, all right, Jay, I got everything I could out of you. Right. He's still my mentor, but I'm like, okay, now I need like a life for a business coach. You know, now I need like this type of stuff. So that's kind of just how I've been going through the stages there. Yeah, no, that and that's true. That's a good point. Cause I think a lot of people don't take that into consideration, knowing that you need a mentor for every aspect of, you know, what you're trying to accomplish. If you're looking to, you know, get into sales, then you need a mentor that can help you coach you in that sales aspect um, Sorry. versus, you know, someone that's going to teach you how, uh, you know, how to, how to house hunt or how to make the calls, you know, this person may not be that one for that particular area. So you got to be mentors for you know, different aspects of your life. Um, so one thing I did want to know is, you know, so you're very much, and you've expressed this a lot is that, you know, when you made that decision, it was like, go, right. So now that you're on the realtor side, you know, why would someone become a realtor um, or why would someone even look to invest in real estate, right? So whether that's becoming a realtor or getting into real estate to become an investor, yeah. why either the two? Um, I, yeah, I can answer both of those pretty quick. So why I chose to be a realtor, right, is because when I first got into real estate, I thought, or when I looked at a realtor, because this is what my realtor did to me, is she picked me up in a car, fed me, drove me around to houses, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like... <clears throat> I am not doing that. That yeah, sounds yeah. horrible. Yeah. You know, like I'm not, I'm not somebody's chauffeur. I'm somebody's resource and advisor. I'm right. not your chauffeur. Right. So like I, so, but once I actually knew what a realtor did, right. There's a lot more to it. So I was like, okay. Awesome. And I just found my niche. I was like, okay, well I'm in the military. I still have a government or I was in the military. I still have a government job. Let me focus on that. Let me be the go-to realtor guy in Colorado Springs. Nobody knows yeah. me. I don't have any other image of me. So ground floor, let me just build this thing up, right? I found a niche. So um, so becoming a realtor, why I think that's amazing, like why I think it's great is because there's multiple ways to build your real estate business. So there's so many, yeah. with, with or without being a realtor, there's so many options, wholesaling, flipping, being a real estate agent, being a real estate uh, team lead, broker mm -hmm. owner. Uh, so many different avenues. That you there's can go so with. many, yeah. like you could, yeah. you know, you can do, you can do an iBuyer. You can just do so much stuff. Mm -hmm. You can do a developer, right? Developing. I mean, shoot, there's not enough homes right now. Develop more. <laughs> do that. Yeah. Yeah. So um, why being a realtor? There's no ceiling, right? You're your own boss, but it's a yeah, double-edged yeah. sword. You're your own boss. You have to get up. 
You have to set your own goals. You have to be accountable to you. Yep. you respect know, your time. Respect your yeah. own time. Yeah. Which yeah. Is you have a lot of like conversations with you, right? Mm-hmm. Like back mm-hmm. and forth. So, yeah. so pros and cons, right? Because nine to five is easy when you have somebody telling you what to do. But as far as real estate, why, why you should invest, I mean, I, it bothers me. I'm sure everybody's been seeing this lately. Oh, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait till the market crashes. And then you see all these people that have been in the industry way longer than you that have seen 2007 and COVID and and that, they've and seen down. all this and you still choose to wait. Yeah. The market is not crashing. I will say it. The market yeah. is not going to crash. They've learned to they, regulate. Yeah. It's going to level out. But there's no signs that it's going to crash and you're going to get some smoking deal. And then when people tell me, and I think this is partly realtors fault, right? Because they post on social media and lenders fault. They post on social media under contract in 24 hours, got my seller $60,000 over, Mm -hmm. blah, Mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. You're basically setting yourself up for failure when you go into the market shifts. So now your seller ain't going to get 60K over. Right, They're probably right. going to be paying closing costs for the buyer, right? So realtors are just as responsible for the misinformation than- 100%. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. So um, so I think people should be buying real estate now. I yeah. think you should never stop buying real estate. I think, I mean, you just need to be strategic on it. Like mm-hmm. you shouldn't be locking yourself in an 8% interest rate right now. That yeah. if you are, you're- Crazy. Buy down the rate. Yeah. Now, and when you say real estate, are you saying, uh, you know, residential properties or commercial? Or are you saying land? Or I mean, I'm saying, saying multifamilies. I'm saying single families. The the um, cap rate just has to make sense. Cap rate is basically uh, a percentage that you're going to make after all expenses. What you're going to net, basically, right? Yeah, yeah. So just for any, I'm sure you know that, but just for anybody like anyone listening, yeah, yeah so not, not too familiar cool. with it. Yeah. yeah. What's your cap rate? Okay. I want <clears> my cap rate to be 8%. Okay. So now you have to find a property that is going to bring you 8% cash flow a month, right? right? After expenses. And just be clear, we want to let people know he's talking about investment properties. So yeah, yeah. Investment properties. But like, I personally like short-term rentals. Now, if people look up about short-term rentals right now, and I know we're kind of coming up on time, they may see some negative things coming because when during recessions, people tend to max out their credit cards, but people tend to put vacations on their credit cards too. (laughs) Even though things are going wrong, we still got to figure out vacations. Yeah, Yeah. but I just read an article the other day that... uh, uh, credit card statements are up right now, which isn't good for short-term rentals. It's right, not. Yeah. It means that people aren't going to be traveling as much. As much, yeah. But if you find a, I I like short-term rentals because the margins are like way bigger, yeah, big. right? What, making, what is short-term for you? Is that uh, is that four months, six months, eight months? Uh, day-to-day, week-to-week. Day-to-day? Week. Day? Okay. Yeah. All right. Anything over 30 days is considered long-term to me. Okay. So like short-term rentals. So like one property for me gets... Um, like a thousand dollars a night here in Florida. Another property in, in Colorado gets about twenty four, or not twenty four. It gets about one seventy five to two forty a month or a night, oh, good, right? Good. So it all depends on the property, and then the mortgages. Obviously, you just need to make sure that the money makes sense. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I like short term rentals because the margins are way bigger versus you making uh, two hundred to six hundred dollars a month, and then by the end of the year someone doesn't pay you. Now you have to go to court. It takes 90 days before you can kick a renter out. You kick them out. That, yeah. You got that $5,000 yeah. margin. You thought you were making for that year is gone. Gone. Yeah. So sure. I'm like, oh, I like short-term rentals, but there's a negative to everything. Yeah. 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 And so you gotta no- be, like you said, you gotta be strategic with it. Right. So yeah. this is your business. You're running it. You have to look at the numbers. I mean, daily. Right. Yeah. Um, people get into this space and, you know, everybody, I guess being an entrepreneur looks really good, but people, people don't understand one thing that I, that I mentioned before is that you have to respect your own time, right? Because, uh, you know, you can have a nine to five and you'll respect that boss when they say you have to be here at eight o'clock, you go to lunch at 11 and you have to leave by six or, you know, whatever time. Yep. However, when you're an entrepreneur or when you're your own boss, you know, how we like to say, 
Um, will you wake up at 7 a.m. so you can be in your office, in your studio, wherever it is, in front of your computer, you know, uh, servicing your clients, you know, reaching out to your leads and then, you know, taking your hour break or however you need it, you know, and then making, yeah. making those connections and respecting your time, like saying, hey, you know what, if, if I was in a job, I'll work eight hours and I'll have one, one hour break. Why can't I do that same thing for myself? And I think it goes back to respecting your own individual time. We don't, we don't see that often with, uh, you know, people that get into that space. So your business will fail not respecting your time. Um, so one thing, oh, uh, another thing that I guess, um, you know, I, I want you to elaborate on and give your experience on is, you know, you are featured on, you know, Fox, like I mentioned, Yahoo, and, and I believe there was another one that you were featured on. Um, so how was that experience? What's that? 